Coming up on Ignition GT this week, I sample the flagship SUV in Audi's lineup, the Q8. The people that love big butts and blings are going to be very happy with what Audi has done with this rear end. We look at the latest fleet of people movers to hit our market, including the Toyota Quantum, Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, and the Opel Safira Life. The In The Garage team scrutinizes JMC's Vigus. Our shootout panel take a look at what many may deem to be the future of the motoring industry, electric vehicles. It is a mindset change. I think we're getting to the point here where they are becoming practical day-to-day -day vehicles. So I thought a good idea would be to play a little word association game today and we see what thoughts pop into your head. Here is the word, are you ready? Audi. Guaranteed the first thing that came to mind was Quattro. Probably also benchmark interiors. But you know, these are things that are not now exclusively the domain of Audi in the premium segment. And to be fair, I think they've probably been a tad complacent. They've certainly been playing it far too safe when it comes to styling. So how do they capture the attention of a restless consumer who is now really overrun with so much choice? Enter the Q8, Audi's halo product for the Q family, but more importantly, showcasing their new progressive design language. A four-door luxury coupe with the presence and practical benefits of an SUV. That is the sales pitch around vehicles like the Q8. And for me, it's actually less coupe-like than its German counterparts. The roofline and the D-pillar are a lot more gently sloped. And that's why it has class-leading headroom. In actual fact, you'll find the whole interior very spacious. Audi really have maximized that three meter long wheelbase. And I think you're gonna find it is better than uh, its competitors. What I like with the individual seats is that there's a lot of versatility. I can slide this all the way forward if I wanna maximize my boot space, or if I wanna extend my leg room, I can slide the seats back. I like that. And when you fold the seats flat, well, you have a massive 1,755 liters to fill. So quite clearly, the practical benefits are there, but let's be honest, the type of person buying a car like this is not looking to be pragmatic. He wants something that is bold and in your face and stands out. The people that love big butts and blings are gonna be very happy with what Audi has done with this rear end. This is a feature you see on all top Audis, the high gloss black detailing, and then obviously this integrated light strip that links up the two tail lights, very much like sister company Porsche and the Cayenne, but because of that little link and the animated light effects that they have, as well as the dynamic indicators, it really gives this Audi Q8 a unique light signature. The Q8 shares a platform with the more traditional 7 seater Q7 SUV sibling, but it is wider, lower, as well as shorter. And it has a smaller boot, but these proportions certainly paint a way more purposeful and dynamic picture. Unsurprisingly, it does have the bigger, the better grille design that all manufacturers do seem to love at the moment. But what is different about this grille for Audi is they've actually added the vertical slats. So it does make it look very, very different to the horizontally focused only grills on the rest of the range. What I do also like is that it does make it look super imposing, the big grille, as do these large air intakes. So it really is an aggressive front end. The HD Matrix LED headlights provide fantastic illumination. And just like the rear, there is an animation effect to create some wow. The Q8 is the first SUV under Audi's new head of design, Mark Licht. And I think it really does set the tone for what's to come for the future models. I think it's welcome back, Audi. Good news. But this is the best part, the drive. It is just, it's sublime. You know. When they launched the Q5 a uh, few years back, I noticed the change then. And since then, I think they've really been head and shoulders above Merck and uh, BMW in terms of the quality of their ride. Um, 
it's just the way their suspension and the dampener settings are set up and the whole chassis combination just works so well, really soaks up the bumps. Obviously this comes standard with Audi Select so I can optimize the drive mode that I want to be in economy comfort, uh, obviously um, making it a little bit more dynamic as well. But it really does, any imperfections on the road are literally just ironed out. And that's impressive considering we're running on the bigger optional 22 inch wheels. To be fair though, we are also with the air suspension which is an option and uh, that certainly is playing its part in creating that magic carpet ride. But what is nice with the air suspension, it gives you a playing tolerance of 90 millimeters that you can adjust between um, with the top ride height sitting at 245 mils. But interesting, they've also offered the air suspension in two different personality types, let's call it. There's the comfort setting, which will set you back 14,000 odd rand for that air suspension, or you can choose the air suspension more focused on dynamic driving, a sportier setup, and that's 18,000 Rand and I think at those prices and what it's going to do in terms of further enhancing the drive it's a box that I certainly would tick. Steering is really progressive and weights up nicely when you do put into dynamic mode and there's also the option for four-wheel steering and what's quite interesting they've got five degrees of play which is actually quite a lot so when you are driving at higher speeds the wheel obviously turns in conjunction with the front wheel which gives you added stability but then this big SUV is way more maneuverable um, at lower speeds than in town with the wheels obviously turning uh, in opposite directions but I can tell you what else you're going to really like is the interior. Now Audi are calling their new interior a luxury lounge and at first glance I can't argue with that. The Q8 introduces their new MMI touch response display which is the central element and it links so seamlessly with the flat air vent strip and the center tunnel with the Tiptronic gear selector. The black panel look literally dissolves into a sleek large black surface when switched off but with the standard ambient and contour lighting package the clean distinctive lines are really emphasized. But let's get back to the technology. Now similar to Jaguar Land Rover's Dual Touch Pro setup, the upper 10.1 inch screen is all about infotainment and navigation, while the 8.6 inch display below is the climate control, seat heating, as well as where you get to write your text. You must try it, it actually works really well and it is comfortably positioned. It's been 10 years since BMW pioneered this segment with their X6 and they had the market all to themselves until Mercedes-Benz came along in 2016 with their GLE Coupe. So Audi really is very late to the game but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it's given them the opportunity to make sure that they get their offering right. So currently there's just one engine offered, but the three litre TDI is set to be introduced soon. The Q8 comes really well spec, which makes the entry price of just under 1.4 million Rand actually very competitive. They've also simplified their S-Line packages, offering a black or platinum package, as well as a sports interior pack. So let me tell you just to wrap up what I like. Fantastic drive. I really like the new sleek and simple interior layout. And I think the design language really works. It's a bold new Audi. I'm thinking there's going to be a queue for this A12.